The escalating violence in Haiti, especially in Port-au-Prince, includes gang attacks on the airports, police stations there. Images like these cut to the core in South Florida, especially for those with close connections. Bishop Pierre-André Dumas from just outside Port-au-Prince, he's been at Jackson Memorial this week recovering from burns from an explosion where he was staying there. Just after his airlift here, six brothers and a priest were kidnapped, the most recent religious and clergy to be targeted in gang aggression. Miami's Archbishop Thomas Wensky is in close contact. So many connections because of the years of work there. And right here at the table with us today, Archbishop, great to have you. Thank, Thank you for coming you. Thank in. You for How is the bishop, first and foremost? Well, I saw him on Wednesday at the hospital, and, and Jackson is probably the best burn care place in the United States, and they're taking very good care of him. He has uh, some relatives, a sister or brother that came down from Boston and, and New York to visit with him, and uh, the hospital is letting them go in one by one because they're very careful about uh, not exposing him to infection because, you know, the, the skin is the first defense of the body against any... 100% uh, burn out, And disease. He, he's, you know, got third-degree burns, second-degree burns, mm -hmm. first-degree first degree burns and so, but I found him in very good spirits and uh, he was very grateful to be where he was. And, and it took a, a while to get him out of Haiti. It took a couple of days uh, because uh, his passport was also burned in that explosion. And so he had to get a new passport and a, a new visa from the United States. So he only got here last weekend. I remember we were tracking his, right, right. his journey there. And, and now he's, he's in the hospital for about a week and uh, uh, He's in the trauma intensive care, but uh, doing well. So we're very careful to say we don't know what that explosion is about yet, still under investigation, it's, but it's, it's, it's a, a big but. Right? It's suspicious, and yeah. I asked the bishop what he thought, and he, you know, he was very noncommittal. He said he couldn't say it was uh, a, a, an accident or something uh, deliberate. But uh, the violence in Haiti recently, uh, in February, intensified because February 7th was the anniversary of the departure of Baby Doc. And so elections Chevalier, have been always, right, so long ago. So long ago. And so the elections in Haiti under their new constitution were always supposed to take place on February 7th. And so we had another February 7th come and go with no movement towards elections. There's not one elected official in Haiti right now. And the prime minister was elected by no one. He was appointed by the president two days before he was assassinated. But there was no parliament to confirm him. And... Uh, and, and so uh, he went off this week to uh, Kenya to sign an accord with the Kenyan government for uh, police officers to come over to help out Haiti. And this is something that's been being talked about for over a year. The Supreme Court of Kenya has stopped it because there was no reciprocal agreement. So he went to Kenya to sign the reciprocal agreement. He also stopped and and the Caribbean, and the Caracom in uh, Guyana, I believe. I was going to ask you about and, that. But, and, but the, the problem is, is that uh, uh, the gangs attacked the airport on Thursday. Right. And the reason yeah. they attacked the airport on Thursday was to make sure that the, president, the prime minister couldn't get back. And so... Uh, so the, the gangs are in full control, um, petrifying to people. But what I want to ask you very specifically for, for our purposes of our conversation here is the, the really focused attacks on clergy there, and Bishop Dumas was was a kind of a critic of this situation. Well, uh, Bishop Dumas is the vice president of the Bishop's Conference of Haiti, and, and he has been trying to play a role of a, as a mediator between uh, several civil society groups that have been uh, uh, working or demanding elections. And, uh, and, and so uh, earlier in February, you know, he was asking his uh, people in his diocese to ring the church bells at noon and to pray for a a solution to this uh, impasse, so that the and he thinks that the prime minister should go, in order to make uh, make possible a solution. So, uh, you know, so that's why there's so much suspicion because he went to uh, Port-au-Prince. He's from the diocese of Ansabo Miraguan, and the south western part of of uh, Haiti. He went to Port-au-Prince, had mass in the morning at one of the uh, churches in Port-au-Prince, and then in the evening 
he went to a place where he usually stays when he's in Port-au-Prince and this explosion happened. Where he was staying. Where he was staying. Yeah. And, and he was there also to participate in some of those, uh, you know, dialogue groups or, you know, talks to yeah. move the thing forward. Uh, last night uh, in Haiti, apparently the gangs and attacked the penitentiary and so a lot of the prisoners uh, were set free. And you know, we, we have not really heard that yet. You are breaking news here yeah, well, with us today. I was talking yeah. to a, a couple uh, of priest friends of mine in Haiti through WhatsApp. They or, opened uh, the, the jails and well, let had, the it, criminals well, out? Well, you know, not, not everybody in jail necessarily is a criminal. Okay, as, as point, a, point well as, taken, as, fair as, point. As, especially in Haiti and the conditions are very in, inhumane, but certainly uh, you know, a lot of people uh, you know, uh, took off and, yeah. and, but you know, in a sense, it's a misnomer to call these gangs because when we think of gangs, we think of like juvenile delinquents, but these are these are well organized and well armed uh, militia. Actors. Would that be a but, yeah? They're almost they're almost a part of a of a of a uh, uh, a pseudo state, and and I think they're very much in, in many ways very much connected with the the cartels that are controlling so much of uh, Latin America, Venezuela, Colombia, So attempting Mexico. to become a de facto government. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, 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 and earlier today I heard rumors of, you know, and it, you know people attempting to, you know, to, to uh, overthrow the government, but as, you know, as, with no elected officials, it's hard to even speak right. about government. But. Let me, um, in the short time we have together, I want you, you know, there's so many connections here. You're mm -hmm. back and forth all right. the time. Um, so many of our Haitian community are devout Catholics. W what do you and your priests in this diocese tell people locally? How do you minister to them about what's going on? Well, we always try to raise hope, you know. And, uh, you know, Haiti is like a, a house on fire. When a house is on fire, you know, your neighbor's house is on fire, you might give them refuge in your house, or you might even try to help them put out the fire. But uh, apparently what we've been trying to do is to lock the doors and have mm -hmm. the people stay in the fire. For example, in, in the, in the uh, three years that uh, President Biden has been in office, he's deported over 25,000 Haitians yeah. out of, from the United States back to Haiti. There was a flight that was supposed to be going on Thursday that didn't get to Haiti because of the airport being shut up. The, the immigration issue very much a right. part of this house on fire. Right. Archbishop Thomas Wensky, great to have you at the table. Appreciate you being here on a Sunday. Thank you. Thank you.